السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم اللهم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقه قولي اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا أما بعد As always, we begin by praising Allah the Almighty and sending the best of salutations upon His beloved, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, yesterday we completed the second taraweeh. Tonight will be the third. Today we'll be completing our second fast, insha'Allah. And the month of Ramadan is fleeing, it's running away from us. We make dua that Allah the Almighty accepts all our good deeds in this month and allow us to witness more, many more Ramadans in our lifetimes. Ameen. So last night we concluded. I'll just wait for the brothers to inshallah finish talking. It's quite difficult to speak over people. So last night we concluded Surah Al Baqarah. We Brothers, can I request you to use the reception area, please, for talking? So last night we concluded Surah Al-Baqarah and we recited, I think, approximately the first 20 verses of Surah Ali Imran. So tonight, inshallah, the plan is we're going to complete the remainder of Surah Ali Imran, which is approximately one juice and a quarter. We'll be reciting that today in Salat Al-Taraweeh. So inshallah, I'll be just picking a few verses from here and there and we'll be discussing them inshallah. And it can be a part of our reflection in Taraweeh tonight inshallah. So the first verse I want to bring to your attention is Allah the Almighty, He says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبِكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah the Almighty instructs our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, say, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you love Allah, if you love Allah. Now we all make the claim that we love Allah. We all make the claim that we love Allah. If you love Allah, fattabi'uni. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, then follow me, follow my way, my way of life, my way of worship, my way of religion. Yuhbibakum Allah, then in return for that, Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Not only that, and He will also forgive your sins. The sins that you commit, Allah will start to wipe them away. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And Allah the Almighty is the forgiving, the merciful. <coughs> now what we need to point out here, my dear brothers and sisters, is that lip service, love to Allah is not sufficient. We have to truly Follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ if we want to attain the true love of Allah the Almighty. And when Allah loves us, when Allah loves us, He'll make an announcement amongst the angels that so and so loves me, I love that person also. He will send Jibreel. He will send Jibreel to go from heaven to heaven and He will be making the announcement Allah the Almighty loves so and so because they love me. Until it will be spread out and it will be well known amongst the creation that Allah loves this individual. Now when we love Allah the Almighty, this is what we have. We have Allah on our side. And when we have Allah on our side, can anything go wrong? Of course not. We won't have to worry about anything. Allah the Almighty, He loves us. And then He continues, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا and if you turn away from Allah and His Messenger, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Then Allah has no love for those who reject and those who disbelieve. Those who reject, turn away from the Qur'an, the Sunnah, the teachings, then Allah has no love for those individuals. May Allah protect us from being in such categories. Ameen. Now, 
when we say we have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we need to actually understand who he is. We need to recognize who he is. We have to know about his life. We have to understand his characteristics. We need to know his practices. If we do not know these things, how can we embody it? You know, if you love someone and somebody sends you a letter or a text message, hmm? you love someone, you know, someone's getting, about to get married and they're in the conversation stages and a letter or a newsletter, sorry, a text message comes from that person. You'll read it once, twice, three times, four times. Why? Because you have that feeling, that connection. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you about a far greater connection. This is the connection with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He tells us, "La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akun ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in." That none of you can be a true believer. None of you can be a true believer until I, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, become more beloved to that individual, more beloved than himself, than his parents, and the entire creation. This is who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is. An individual came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, inform me about the day of judgment, what will take place." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had hikmah, he had wisdom. When he would answer a question, he would tailor the answer to the individual. So it wasn't one size fits all. He would tailor the answer to that individual. So instead of telling this person about the day of judgment or the signs of it, he asked. What have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for it? Day of judgment we know is coming. What have you prepared for it? He said, look, I don't have much, but one thing I know is I, I love Allah and His Messenger. I love Allah and His Messenger. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded and he said, Al-mar'u ma'a man ahabba. That a person will be with the one whom he has loved. If you have love for that person, then we hope that we will be resurrected with that person. So my brothers and sisters, if we have love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we follow in his footsteps, we can hope to be resurrected with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine being amongst the group of the Sahaba, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the leader, and Allah says, you're with him, go, go, go into Jannah. But if our love is misplaced, and if instead of فَتَّبِعُونِ follow me, we're following everybody other than him. We want to follow the, raps, the rappers and, the, uh, and all the famous people, the actresses and the actress, uh, actors, and those who sort of have some sort of status in this dunya, but got nothing to do with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then what's going to happen, my brothers and sisters? He's telling us, الْمَرْءُ مَا مَنْ أَحَبَّ A person will be with the one whom he has loved. Do we want to really be resurrected with these people? Of course not. We don't want to be resurrected with people who have no connection to Islam, no connection to deen. May Allah the Almighty give some understanding. Then we move on. Now, there's a big portion of Surah Al Imran which is dedicated to the family of Imran. So Al Imran, Al means family, Imran obviously an individual. Now, Imran was a pious servant of Allah the Almighty. He was an Imam. And he was an Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. And may Allah the Almighty alleviate it from the enemies. Amin. Now, his wife, Ibn Kathir, goes into a lot of detail. You can open up and have a read of it there. His wife was barren. She had no children. And he, Ibn Kathir goes on to mention that she saw a bird and a bird was bringing food, um, sustenance for its little babies. And she wanted a child, she made dua to Allah the Almighty and she fell um, pregnant. Her name was Hanna bint Fakut. Now, before she gave birth, Imran had already passed away. Imran had passed away. So she made a dua to Allah the Almighty. It called it, إذ قالت امرأة عمران ربي إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني. Oh my Lord. So when the wife of Imran said, Oh my Lord, I make a vow <coughs> that whatever be in my stomach, it is dedicated for the house of Allah, Masjid Al-Aqsa. It is dedicated for your worship. <coughs> فتقبل مني. So accept it from me. 
Indeed, you hear all and you know all. Now come the time of birth. She gave birth to a daughter and then she called out to Allah the Almighty that, Oh my Lord, I have given birth to a girl. I have given birth to a girl. Now the norm was that you would not dedicate somebody to the house of Allah other than a male. Girls wouldn't normally take up that responsibility. You know, just the way Imams are not usually female. Uh, use the word usually. Um, they're not usually fam- female. Equally, they would not put somebody in there who was not male. Now she's given birth to this child and it's a girl. Now she's worried. How do I fulfill my, my oath, my vow that I've taken to Allah the Almighty? And then Allah says, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah is well aware of what you have given birth to. And subhanAllah, in one of the other qira'at, <coughs> the qira'at of Shu'bah, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'atu. And Allah knows, she is saying this then, Allah is quoting her, and Allah knows, Allah is well aware of what I have given birth to. Meaning the daughter I have given birth to. And Allah reassures her, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى This daughter that you have been given is far greater. Any son that you were expecting could not match this daughter. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى and then she says, وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And I have named her Maryam. Now what is the meaning of Maryam? The scholars, they explain, it comes in the meaning of Amatullah, the servant of Allah. So the male version, Abdullah, female version, Amatullah. So Maryam in their language means the servant of Allah. Or Khadimullah, the, uh, Khadimatullah, the, the one who gives service to Allah. Now, one thing the scholars they point out for us here is the importance of giving good names. When a, when a person is blessed with a child, is to give a good name to that child. Something which is meaningful. Not just throw a can down the street or something and whatever noise it makes, give that child that name. No, this is not what Islam says. The Prophet ﷺ, when he had come into Medina and he saw individuals with different names, he started to change their names. When, when Ali radiallahu anhu, he, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his child. And he asked him, what is this child's name? Now this is the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said his name is, can anybody tell me what the initial name was? No? He said this is Harb. Harb. Ha-raba. Harb means? It means fighting, war. It means war. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he came with his child and he called him Harb. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he's not Harb, he is Al-Hasan. Eh? Everybody knows Al-Hasan radiallahu an. Okay, second child, he comes, what is this child's name? Again, Al-Harb. He is war. So he says, no, this is al Hussein. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would change these names and give them good meaning. Somebody came, their name was Barra. Barra. Barra means somebody who is pious. Okay. So this is almost self-praise. So he said, no, you're not Barra, you are Zainab. So he would change them and he would give them good names. So equally, us as Muslims, we give good names. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if you open up Sahih al-Bukhari, and you'll find a chapter in there where Imam Bukhari has said that keeping the names of the Anbiya, keeping the names of the Prophets, and then how he proves this point that we, sh- we are encouraged to keep the names of the Prophets, is he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrates a hadith and he brings it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named his son. Can anybody tell me what the names of the sons of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam What's the first son? Anybody can tell me. I know, I know it's nearly iftar time and everybody's a bit tired, but please speak up inshallah. Excellent. So Ibrahim used the last one. Okay. The first one was Al-Qasim. And then we had... Abdullah, Abdullah or Tahir, both names have been given to him, and we have Ibrahim. Now he establishes it through Ibrahim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he named his son Ibrahim. So he says, Imam Bukhari, his chapter heading is, keeping the names of the Prophets. So something that a child could look, look up to, someone that the child could look up to. If I'm named after someone, yesterday I was speaking to Sheikh Muhammad, the Imam that would lead Tarawih with us, and when we were sharing the parts, 
So within his part, there's an ayah, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ The first time you come across the name Muhammad in the Quran, he said, I love this part. Why? Because my name's in there. Yeah? My name's in there. The Imam Sahib is saying that. So when you can relate to something, it gives you more appreciation, someone to look up to, a role model. So this why this is why it's very important that we give, give our children good meaningful names. Good meaningful names. And then she, say, she says, Wa inni bika wa min And I have I seek your protection of Allah from Shaytan, the rejected in regards to my daughter Maryam and her offsprings. Now we only know we know that she only had one offspring, and that was anybody can tell me. Isa bin Maryam, yeah? So Isa alayhi salam. Now when she says, I have sought your protection, refuge, in regards to these two, then what is this protection? How did it manifest? How did it come about? You open up Sahih Bukhari, you open up Sahih Muslim, you find the hadith in there. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a child is born, when a child is born, shaitan comes and makes his introduction. Yeah? Shaitan comes and makes his introduction to the child. And the child will come, and will poke the child. Will come and poke the child, causing the child to cry. So this is Shaitan coming and saying that I am your lifetime enemy. I'll be there all the way to misguide you. I will start from now. He comes and pokes the child and makes the child cry. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Illa Isa ibn Maryam wa Umma." The only exception to this rule. The only exception to this rule the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said is Isa and his mother alayhi salam that they were protected from this introduction of shaitan. So each and every single one of us has gone through it. Shaitan came at the time of birth and introduced himself to us. Let's move on. <clears throat> now this child is born. Allah the Almighty he continues. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتٍ حَسَنًا Maryam alayhi salam, her mother made a dua for the child. Yeah? Mother made a dua for the child. And the dua was accepted from me. So Allah saying, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا He accepted it. بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ In the best of ways. Now there's another point, of, point to highlight here is the power of the dua of the parent for the child. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us that there are three individuals. The dua is never rejected. There are three individuals whose du'as are never rejected. Number one, he says, a traveler, whilst he is traveling. So when, while somebody is traveling, they're taking up the, um, the difficulties of a journey, the du'as are accepted. Okay? Number two, and this is very relevant for us, was hatta yuftin, And a fasting person until he breaks his fast. So from sunrise until sunset any dua that is made in that time provided it meets the conditions of dua sincerity um, and a person is engaged with the dua person is doing the praising of Allah he is making the salat wa salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's done properly then Allah will accept that and then he says a dua of a parent for their child it's not rejected and many times what happens and I've seen it many times, I've heard it many times. A parent becomes so upset with their child that they don't mean it, but they make a dua against them. And they don't understand the power of the dua. So it's very, it's very important that we're careful when we want to curse someone or when we say bad words towards someone. A believer is not la'an. We don't curse. This is not the characteristics of a believer. So make it dua. Oh my child, oh, oh Allah, my child is in need of guidance. Make that dua instead of saying, you will never be successful. That's a dua. What have I done? You know, things like that. It can be very detrimental. May Allah give us an understanding. Nevertheless, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ And then he says, نَبَاتٍ حَسَنًا Allah the Almighty, He took the responsibility of giving her the best of upbringings. The best of upbringings. Zakariya, and Zakariya alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, became the guardian. He was the guardian of Maryam alayhi salam. Now, anybody could tell me what the relationship between Maryam and uh, Zakariya was? Uncle, okay, what way? 
Not mother's brother, no. No. So it was mother's sister's husband. Okay? In our language, we call it khalu. Um, so it's the mother's sister's husband. Okay? So she, uh, he was, she became the guardian of Maryam alayhi salam. So Zakari alayhi salam, another prophet of Allah. Now Allah then he quotes to us and he reminds us كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلِيهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ Whenever Zakariya alayhi salam would come into her room, you know, to check up on her, uh, her well-being, he would always find assistance with her. He'd always, she will, he will always find that there's food, provisions with her. So he would ask, يَا مَرْيَمْ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا Where did you attain this from? Where did you get it from? I didn't provide this to you. I didn't bring it to you. Remember, she is living in Masjid Al-Aqsa. She's got her own quarters. And no one else has access to it other than her guardian. Nobody else has got access to it. When we come to Surah Maryam, we will see that she's got her own, um, she's got her own quarters. Nobody goes in there. When she sees Jibreel Alayhi Salaam, she's shocked. How did you get in? You're not my guardian. So I didn't give you this. Where did it come from? Qalat huwa min What a great response. She says, huwa min It is from Allah the Almighty. Where else, where else is it going to come from? And you open up the books of Tafsir, Mujahid Rahimahullah. He says that he would come to her in the summer times and will find the fruits of winter. And he will go to her in the time of winter and find the fruits of summer. This is how Allah provided for us. Subhanallah. Inna Allah man yasha'u hisab. She continues, Indeed, Allah provides for whom He wants without any accountability, without any account. Limitless. Allah can give as He wishes, and Allah can also seize and take away. So, Inna Allah man yasha'u hisab. Now, imagine this. When Zakaria alayhi salam is seeing this, he's an old man, his wife is barren, he's got no children at an old age. He sees this and he starts to make a dua to Allah. You know what happens many a times is when we make a dua and we make a dua and we make a dua and it does not, we don't feel like it's been responded to, we become despondent. We lose hope. So we stop making dua. And what we do mentally, perhaps not intentionally, we limit, we limit the mercy of Allah the Almighty. We think we made the dua, it's not happening. Let's just move on. Did you know Sahih Muslim opened up the hadith and he say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Allah will accept a dua ma lam yasta'ajil as long as a person does not haste Allah in it. As soon as we say oh Allah I want it by then and I need it by then and I need it by then then it's cancelled. We can't haste Allah the Almighty. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu I'm going on tangents with tangents I'm worried about the time. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu he makes mention that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Dua is accepted in three methods or in three ways. Number one is you make a dua, oh Allah, I want a Ferrari, Allah gives you a Ferrari. That's a simple, you got it. Number two, in place of that dua, Allah will remove a calamity which was to befall you. So you know you have near misses. You understand what I mean by near miss? I had plenty of those when I was in Mecca, you know. Everybody is driving the way they want. But you have a near miss and you think to yourself, Subhanallah, how did I how did I get out of this? How did I survive? Allah rescued me. It's, it's a result of dua. And number three, and he, he comments on this, he says that the reward of the dua will be saved for the hereafter. And come the day of judgment, when a person will see the reward of the dua, they will say, Oh, if only none of my dua were to be accepted in the dunya. This is how great the reward will be then. This is how great the reward will be then. So nevertheless, coming back to Zakari alayhi salam, he's an old, old man now. And his wife is barren, she can't bear any children, and she's also of old age. Zakariya alayhi salam, he saw what is with Maryam alayhi salam. A boost of iman. I mean, he's already a prophet of Allah the Almighty. He takes this opportunity and he's making a dua now again. هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ قَالَ رَبِّي حَبِلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى Oh my Lord, gift me from yourself a pure child. 
a pure child. Indeed, you are the one who listens to du'as. You are the one who listens to du'as. Again, you know, subhanAllah, when you look at the Quran, there's so many lessons. You know, where do I stop and where do I start? Innaka sami'u du'a. Innaka sami'u du'a. You're the one who listens to the du'as. When we make du'a, we need to call upon the names of Allah the Almighty. And the one that is befitting the du'a. If we're seeking maghfira and we want forgiveness, we call him Ya Ghaffar. If we want Rahmah, we call him Ya Rahman. If we're after wealth, we call him Ya Razzaq. They're all there. They're all there. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah has the beautiful names. We find in Surah uh, Al-A'raf. Yes, Surah Al-A'raf. I'm right. Eighth juice. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ Ninth juice. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Call him with those. قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهَ وَادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ قُلْ اللَّهُ وَادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Oh Allah, أَيَّمَّا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Whichever one you use, Allah has the beautiful names. So he is using the appropriate one here. Oh Allah, I've asked you many times for a child, but you listen to the du'as, I want a response. I want a response. So we use the appropriate names when we're making du'a to Allah the Almighty. So he's made this du'a now. فَنَادَتُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٍ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ He's going about his daily worship, and he is in his prayer now. He is standing in the mihrab, in the place of prayer, and the angels start to call out to him. فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels call out to him, أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَا Allah gives you the glad tidings of Yahya, of his son called Yahya, مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ And such will be the description of Yahya, he will also be a prophet, who will confirm the message of the kalima of Allah. Who is called Kalimatullah? Which Prophet was given the title Kalimatullah? The word of Allah. Anybody? I think everybody's hungry today. Isa alayhi salam. Okay? So Isa and Yahya are related how now? They're cousins, okay? First cousins. First cousins. Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam, they're first cousins. Okay? It says aunties. Son, okay. So when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went for Mi'raj, he ascended to the heavens. He met Isa and Yahya together in the same heaven. Eh? They're both cousins, both together, both prophets of Allah the Almighty. Both the people tried to assassinate. Yeah, they were successful with one, and they were unsuccessful with the other. Yahya alayhi salam, they managed to assassinate him. And as for Isa alayhi salam, he was lifted up to the heavens. Nevertheless, Allah is saying, He will come and confirm the message of Isa alayhi salam. Wasayyidan, He will be a leader for His people. Wahasuran, He will be celibate. He will not have any human desires towards anyone else. The natural desires. Wanabiyan min as salihin, and He will be a prophet from amongst the righteous. And then Zakiri alayhi salam, in his astonishment, he responds, Qala Rabbi, Anna yakunu li ghulam. Oh my Lord, how can I have a child? How can I have a child? وَقَدْ بَلَغَنِيَ الْكِبَرُ I've reached old age. وَمْرَأَةِ عَاقِرُ And my wife is barren. She cannot have babies. She cannot have children. How can this happen? قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ My brothers and sisters, there's so much hope in there for us. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ He responded. The angel responded. Allah does as He wills like this. Just as he has given you a child, he does as he wills. So we cannot go limiting the power of Allah, the Almighty. So then Zakariya alayhi salam, he asks for a sign and then the sign is given to him. He will remain silent for three days. And we move on now, inshallah. Okay. Are we okay for time or am I boring you guys? Huh? Carry on, is it? Okay. That's all right then. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ Okay, we move on to now Maryam alayhi salam. Now, Maryam alayhi salam, Allah the Almighty has given a lofty, lofty status that not many women have, have achieved. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ The angels came to Maryam. يَا مَرْيَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَاخَرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ O Maryam, Allah has chosen you and He has purified you from the accusations that were made against you. Everybody is aware of what the accusation that was made against Maryam alayhi salam? The Yahud 
the Jews at the time said that she bore an illegitimate child, meaning Isa alayhi salam was born out of wedlock. They rejected completely the concept of Isa alayhi salam being born without a father. Yeah? They said, no, she must have committed zina wal iyadu billah, adultery, and as a result of that, she became, um, she became uh, pregnant, she fell pregnant, and she had Isa alayhi salam. So we have two extremes. We have two extremes. Yeah? Imam al-Tahawi in his Aqidah, Bayanu Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah, he makes mention right at, towards the end that some people fell into one extreme and others fell into the other extreme when it came to Isa alayhi salam. One is that they accused the mother of Isa alayhi salam of committing zina and she gave birth to an illegitimate child. And the other extreme that they come to Isa alayhi salam is, no, he is the son of God. He is divine. He is one of the three. A part of the Trinity. So the two extremes. Allah the Almighty is saying, no, you're free of it. And we're going to come to the verse slightly later. So Allah the Almighty is saying, you're free from these accusations. Allah has purified you. He has chosen you above all the other women of the dunya, of creation. The Prophet sallallahu tells us, كَمُّلَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ كَثِيرٍ And this hadith comes in many different versions. So, كَمُّلَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ كَثِيرٍ Many men have been successful. They have been complete. However, when it came to the women folk, he said there's only a handful, a few. Can anybody list who they are to me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they have been, they have reached the ultimate level. Number one, Maryam alayhi salam. She is from amongst the elite of the women. Number two, Asiya, Imra'at Fir'aun. So Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. So Asiya alayhi salam, she's amongst the elite. Number three, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. So our mother, mother of the believers, Khadija radiallahu anha. Number four, Aisha radiallahu anha and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa called a tharid and Fatima also. So in, um, in, the, in the narration of Bukhari you'll find Aisha in the narration of Nasa'i you'll find Fatima. Fatima only? Tayyip. Inshallah. So Fatima without a doubt she's there and in, the, in one version Aisha also there and she says she is like tharid and tharid was a, um, a luxury dish at the time of the Prophet وسلم, to show that she is one of the best. So, So, Allah the Almighty, He's chosen Maryam alayhi salam above the rest. And then Allah, He concludes these set of verses by thinking, These verses, are from amongst the unseen which we have revealed to you. And you were not there present, O Prophet When it came to the guardianship of Maryam السلام, she was the son, or oh sorry, she was the daughter of the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa. She was related to a Prophet of Allah. So she already has a status. She's already been devoted for the house of Allah, the Almighty. Now everybody wanted to take guardianship. I'm happy to look after her. I want to take the responsibility. You know, we take responsibility or we sponsor a orphan. The Prophet sallallahu says, Ana wa kafirul yateen That me and the one who looks after a orphan are like this. And he showed his finger like this. Meaning in Jannah, they'll be like this. Now what does this mean? Does it mean that they're as close as this? Or is it the distance between this finger and that finger? Allah the Almighty knows best. Nevertheless, so they want to take care of this yatim now. Eh? Yati, this yatim, this orphan, Maryam alayhi salam. So who's going to do it? Everybody wants to do it now. They want the honor of this. So, so a test was put out that they will go to the river and they will cast their pens. They will cast their pens and the partner will go against the tide. That person will become the guardian and it was Zakriya alayhi salam who was successful in that and he became the guardian. We move on. Okay. Moving on. And further on, 
Allah the Almighty says, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ The example of Isa alayhi salam is like of Adam alayhi salam. It's like that of Adam alayhi salam. <coughs> he created Adam from soil, dust. خَلَقَهُ مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ Then he said to him, be and he was. So he said to, about Adam alayhi salam, he created and he fashioned him from the soil. And then he said, be and Adam alayhi salam was. Now, Allah the Almighty, next verse is, Al-Haqqu min Rabbik, this is the truth from your Lord, فَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ So do not be from amongst those who have doubt. So why is it that you would have doubt in the creation or in the fatherless birth of Isa alayhi salam when Adam alayhi salam was created without a father and a mother? If anything, if you're going to say because he has no father and he's born without a father and therefore he must be the son of God, he must be the son of God, then what about Adam alayhi salam? He doesn't have a father or a mother. We can say in the case of Isa alayhi salam, he's got a mother. Maryam alayhi salam is present there. Then what about Adam alayhi salam? So your usul, your principles are not fitting in. It's not consistent. It doesn't make sense. So therefore Allah is saying, this is the truth. And don't be from amongst those who have doubt. Allah is saying this. That they're both equal. They're both creations of Allah. They're both created from the word kun. Be and they were. Now moving on. I'll do one more verse inshallah and then I'll conclude because they don't take too long. Towards the end of the third Jews, I've still got the whole of fourth Jews left as well. Anyway, Allah says towards the end of the third Jews, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ Remember the time when Allah took a covenant, an oath from all the prophets. لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابُ وَحِكْمَةً that when I give you a book, so whichever scripture, and I give you wisdom, knowledge. ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعْكُمْ Then, whilst you are alive, whilst you are alive, so this is the context of the verse. So Allah is saying to each prophet before they were sent to the dunya, that when I give you your book, meaning you receive your prophethood, and you've received the knowledge from me, and then, whilst you are alive, a prophet comes to you. Another messenger comes to you from Allah. Confirming that which is with you. Okay, confirming that which is with you. The covenant is that you will believe in him and you will assist him in whatever he needs. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he comments and he says that this is referring to none other than our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each Prophet, each Prophet was made to take an oath before coming to this dunya that if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to appear during your lifetime, then you need to believe in him and assist him. He's in charge. He's in charge. قَالَ أَأَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ إِسْرِي so Allah asked them, do you accept this? And will you hold on to this covenant that I have made with you? قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا So they all confirmed, yes, we accept this. قَالَ فَاشْهَدُوا Allah then says to them, then you be a witness. وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And I am also a witness with you. So Allah has also taken a testimony of this. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّ بَعْدَ ذَلْكَ And whosoever turns away from this. If anybody rejects it, he comes to you, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he comes to you after this, and you reject him. Allah says, فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Then they are the transgressors. They are the transgressors. Now, we've already spoke about following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, let me bring to your attention a hadith which can be found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. In which Abdullah bin Thabit radiyallahu anhu, he says that Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, and he say, said to him that I was walking past Banu Quraidha, one of the tribes in Medina. And I saw that they were writing things down from the Torah, the book that was given to Musa alayhi salam. So I asked them, can you give me a piece of paper, a parchment with some of the comprehensive statements of the Torah? And this was given to me. So Ya Rasulullah, if you permit me, can I recite some of it to you? So Umar ibn Khattab is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa can I recite parts of the Torah to you? And Abdullah ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, he says, 
فتغير وجه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the color of the face of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم started to change meaning he could see anger now the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is becoming angry so immediately when umar realized, realized this رضي الله عنه he started to call out رضينا بالله ربا وبالاسلام دينا وبمحمد رسولا that i accept allah as my lord islam to be my religion muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be my messenger and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he calmed down he calmed down and then he says he says that if musa alaihi salam was to appear in front of you now and you were to go and follow him he's a prophet of allah you were to go follow him and leave me behind then you would most surely have been misguided you would be misguided because musa alayhi salam's authority is no longer valid when i am present so if any prophet was to come during the life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the authority not the other prophets we should count ourselves lucky we should say alhamdulillah 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 that we are a follower of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam each prophet would be made to follow the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when isa alayhi salam comes back with the sec- for the second coming he not come back in the position of a prophet he'll come back in the in the position of a ummati of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will have to follow the quran and the sunnah this is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was taken for isra from masjid al haram to masjid al aqsa he was made the imam of all the prophets who were present there hadith of muslim ahmad you can find it there it shows us the importance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how much he means to us la ilaha illa allah is not sufficient you need muhammad rasulullah yeah, everybody agree if somebody says and you know what the the quraish believed in this la ilaha illa allah in the sense that they believed well actually that's perhaps not right they believed in allah no doubt they believed in allah they associated others with him but they reject muhammad also sallallahu alaihi wasallam if somebody says la ilaha illa allah without muhammad rasulullah the islam is not valid they are valid so valid they will not be given the opportunity to enter into jannah if they don't believe in muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's the day of friday when we hear the name muhammad this say sallallahu alaihi wasallam can't go wrong when we say sallallahu alaihi wasallam this salam will be taken the angels hadith of uh, abu dawud the angels will take this present it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will listen to this dua that we made for him and he will use our name and respond back to us so when we heard sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we move into the fourth juz in the fourth juz there's a lot of discussion around the battle of uhud there's a lot of discussion around being good and there is a lot of discussion towards the end about reflection over the creation and we'll conclude with that inshallah Uh, it was the habit of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we would wake up for salatul fajr in the morning he would recite the concluding verses of surah al-imran so in fi khalqi as-samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layl to to the end where allah reminds us about reflecting over the creation um, the creation of uh, the creation of the heavens and the earth the alt- alternating and the changing of the night, night and day and then he reminds us that we can remember allah while sitting lying down on our side it doesn't matter standing in every position we remember allah the almighty and we have a number of duas may allah the almighty allow us to benefit and strive and follow in the footsteps of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allow us to show gratitude and thanks to allah the almighty for for making us from amongst the ummah muhammadi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and may allah the almighty accept our fasts and allow us to witness many many more ramadans in our lifetime allahumma ij'alna min ahli alquran ya rabbal alamin wa salli allahumma ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakumullah khairan wa ahsanal jaza i'm hungry so you can't ask any questions <laughs>